This is ESPN Esports. I'm Ardo Cal. Happy to be joined by Young Buck, who is the coach of XL Esports. They went one on one on the weekend, uh, including a victory on Saturday over Misfits. Uh, let's just look at the weekend overall, Young Buck. How do you feel about your team after this week's performances? I think beating Misfits was a really big deal for us uh, emotionally. I mean, we haven't beaten them uh, in the last three times we faced them this season, and this was a do or die situation. Like, if we had lost, we would probably be out of playoffs uh, contention. So that was a really big win. Uh, also very disappointed we lost yesterday because Schalke is the team that you're supposed to beat and get your wins against. So had we won that, we would have probably been in playoffs right now or like been celebrating because it would have been very difficult not to make it. Um, but we're fighting. Like We came back emotionally from uh, the, the really disappointing game yesterday. And uh, next week uh, we have our eyes set on, uh, on Origin. Yeah, you have a very busy week next week, and I want to get to that. What do you make of Schalke? Like, they're on a four-game win streak right now. They seem to be turning on, turning it on very late in the season. But what is it about them that has made them difficult to play against now? It's hard to tell. I think Gillies, as a playmaker, is actually very impactful. So that is a really big deal for them. I, I think that before that, they didn't have someone that was pulling the trigger for them in the early games. So they were kind of the team that was uh, slowly rolling over and dying. And now they have that one playmaker, Gilius, and he's actually popping off. He, uh, soon enough, he might actually be in contention for the MVP of the split with his crazy performances. Yeah, um, the Baron steal today, too. Yeah, like the, the Baron steal just the early <laughs> games as well. This guy is, uh, is nuts. So the LEC is so unpredictable, right? I mean, other than Mad Lions and Rogue at the top, every single team is within two wins of each other. And it's just incredible to see how much parity there is in the league. And you're facing Fnatic, G2, and Origin next week. Teams that are all battling for playoff spots just like you are. In your opinion, for this split, what has made the LEC so tight in competition? Uh, that's a tough one. I, I do think that Fnatic and G2 fell from grace. Um, Fnatic usually, at least when I was there, usually had a bad period in the summers. Um, and this time was kind of similar. And I think G2 falling down from Grace was really unexpected. It uh, may have had a lot to do with uh, Perks' uh, personal problems that he had with his father passing away and then they weren't practicing much. So that's, that's actually really sad that uh, it happened that way. It does also seem that Mad Lions and Rogue are really stepping up now as the new rookie teams. Like last split, they were kind of there. They were like playing for the playoff spot, but they weren't really looking to damage G2 or Fnatic on this big stage, but now they are. I, I don't know what really changed between the splits that made them uh, that much better, because they're, they're still beating Fnatic and G2, so um, they deserve to be in the top two positions. And we also saw a lot of roster changes in the lesser ranked team, SK, XL, Vitality. Uh, we all made roster changes, and uh, even Misfits made roster changes, all for the better. Um, so all the bottom tier teams are now fighting for the mid uh, for the last playoff spot instead of our last bit there were a few like that weights in the in the LEC. So if someone were to look at your schedule and say, my goodness, you have to play Fnatic, G2, and Origin. All of them were battling for top spots last split, and they're still in contention this split, even though, like you said, Fnatic and G2 maybe not as good as they were in previous splits. Like, how confident are you in your team going into this Super Week next week? I mean, it is, for, of course, a tough schedule. Um, I think most of the other teams also have pretty rough schedules. But what's really important to me is that we have the we have our destiny in our own hand when we play Origin. If we win that game, then we have a really good chance of just making it in. Um, at the very worst case, get a tiebreaker, I believe. So we have uh, we we have Origin first. They have gone zero four, I think, in the last four games. So things aren't going that well. It's not the same Origin as last uh, last split or last year even. So um, hopefully, XL rise to the challenge and uh, the guys are ready to perform under pressure. At one point this week, it almost felt like maybe this weekend of LEC games were in jeopardy. It was a surreal Thursday with the whole Neom situation and how quickly the sponsorship was announced and then rescinded. Can you take me through your Thursday? Like, what were some of the conversations that you had? How did you digest all of this as the coach of an LEC team? Um... For us, it was mostly laughing and making jokes. Um, there were neon flags in the tournament realm when we were screaming, so that was kind of funny. Um, I think that generally speaking, esports is very inclusive and LGB, like pro LGBT. So it was a little bit strange. Um, but I personally, I like to stay out of the politics of it. You know, whether you draw the line at uh, at neon or draw the line somewhere else, whether it's like drawing at sponsors that they currently have or that things that are happening in other regions. Me, I just want to stay out of it because I'm not uh, a political person. We just uh, play video games and are good at it. So um, 
it's more for the organization to handle it and i think they handled it quite well i think they had a very strong position that they didn't want uh, them to be part of this uh, lec broadcast because yeah it, it doesn't really have a place just can you just take me through whether or not uh, you and the players had any conversations because I know that there was some discussion particularly with the LEC casters uh, about possibly not working this weekend about saying this sponsor having this sponsorship is uh, we feel so strongly about it that we don't want to go to work this weekend and I was wondering whether any of those type of conversations happened with the players whether they expressed concerns about the sponsorship D did any of those conversations happen? Um, for us, there were more worries that the, the LEC wouldn't be played because we want to play. Um, it doesn't mean that we stand behind the sponsorship or stand behind Neo. Um, it's just that we train really hard and at the end of the week, you know, if, if the league gets cancelled on a Thursday, it kind of sucks. Um, we were also in a similar position last split with the Corona situation where the, it looked, we had a full week cancelled and uh, it's just not fun as a player to have to train more and more and more and have it postponed. So. Um, having said that, I'm really happy that the casters took the stance and were actually willing to put their livelihoods on the on the table and actually draw a line somewhere. I think that's a really really good thing to do, and uh, I'm also happy LEC took the right decision and that we actually got to play this week. My last question involves Worlds. So now we know that Worlds is going to be in one city in Shanghai, sort of like a Worlds bubble, right? And with other traditional sports, we have seen some apprehension, very small amount, but apprehension from players returning, uh, whatever life situation they might have, whether it's a health condition or whether it's a pregnancy in the family, whatever. What I'm curious about is, let's say Excel make worlds. Um, has any, have you guys had any conversations about going to Shanghai? Has there been any apprehension or any concerns from anybody, whether it's staff or players, about traveling to Shanghai to compete in worlds? um there haven't been any talks about it uh, my girlfriend has said like oh it's a little bit scary with the coronavirus these days um, but i believe that riot wouldn't allow this to happen if they if it would jeopardize the the player's health because they have shown that in the spring split that they were really quick to to pull the trigger when there was uh, i think it was romaine got the coronavirus they just canceled the entire week because there might have been infection in the studio so i think riot has a good good eye on it and i think they do care about the player health and definitely don't want any stories of players catching coronavirus um and worlds generally you stay a couple of weeks in the same hotel so i think if you've been to worlds before it's uh, nothing too new it's it's a very similar experience and if you're going to be stuck in a hotel for three or four weeks honestly the best ones are probably in china those have had the craziest hotel rooms i've ever seen in my life so <laughs> uh, yeah if you're going to have to be somewhere for three four weeks maybe longer if you make it far into worlds then uh, might as well be china Last question, actually. I remember uh, at the beginning of the LEC summer split that there was like a phased approach to bringing the players back. And I think it was the break where initially that might have been the idea to bring the players back or at least consider bringing the players back into studio there as sort of like the phase two. Has that ever been brought up since? Like, is there any idea whether or not maybe even for playoffs or the spring split final, uh, whether or not they will be played on LAN? Or have you heard anything either way? Um... I know that Riot has been trying to start the entire summer split from the studio. They've been uh, trying really hard, but they're also at the mercy of the coronavirus and the governments. And I think that if they could start uh, the split in the studio next week, they would do it. If they could do the playoffs in the studio, I'm sure they would take it. I don't know where it is right now. Um, I know they also aim to do it after the break, but the legality issues were there, so they couldn't make it happen. I don't know if that changes. I think it just really depends on the stance that the, that the German government has, because I know Riot wants to have it in the studio uh, every week if they can. And uh, But I, I don't have any inside information, sorry. That's fine. Your opinion then, and this is my last question, I promise. Your opinion, now that you've played so many games online, would you, assuming Excel, Excel make the playoffs, right? Would you want to play on LAN or would you want to resume online because now you're getting into a comfort zone with your players playing online? Or would you prefer going back to LAN? Purely for selfish reasons, I would want to play online because we have a couple of rookies um, and we have three players who haven't made playoffs ever. So we have two like a half a rookie. Uh, we have Kedro who never made playoffs before. And we have Felix Kreis. So for us, it it's obviously beneficial right now to have high pressure games uh, in the in our own office in our own uh, comfort zone like you mentioned so if it's up to me i would like to stay at home but uh there is something special about being in the studio so it, it doesn't hurt to get that experience young buck is the head coach of excel they play fanatic g2 and origin next week all the best to you thanks for your time thank you very much and have a good day